Good morning. Welcome to another encouragement here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother. Because it doesn't matter who I am, the only one that matters is Jesus. I'm thankful to, to be talking with you guys again this morning, and um, I've really um, been just having a pretty good week. Amen. Uh, just a, really, it's been a phenomenal week. I saw someone get saved, become born again this week. It's someone that I know, and man, I'm telling you, when I see uh, God move, wow, God is. The Lord is a deliverer, people. The Lord is a savior. He saves, he delivers us. And um, when we come to him, he will deliver. I saw this person call on the name of the Lord and I seen this person's whole countenance change right before my eyes. And I knew that he was born again and that person knew that they were born again. It was phenomenal people, I'm telling you. Yeah, um, for God so loved the world, I have to start out with this. Did he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on, rely on, trust in, um, turn in from their wicked ways, uh, not leaning on their own understanding, but um, putting everything that they have, putting all their, their eggs in one basket. <laughs> and that basket's name is Jesus. They would not perish, but have everlasting life. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it happen in my life this week with with uh, this person that I'm talking about. And uh, man, it was just phenomenal. And so one of the things that I started reading this week, even after that, I felt like the Lord was leading me to, and I almost didn't talk about it this morning. But this is what the Lord wants me uh, this morning. And the, if I could title this message this morning, this encouragement, it would be our, our God will deliver us. Hallelujah. Our God will deliver us. We're coming out of Psalm chapter 18. And we're going to be just kind of coasting through this chapter. And... Um, we're going to see what the Lord has for us this morning. Let's have a quick prayer. Father, thank you so much for another day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you that you came and, and lived the life you live and died the death you died and rose again because death could not hold on to you for you were perfect. You were without sin. You came to deliver us, Father. And Father, we thank you for that salvation today. Um, Father, open our hearts and our minds to what you would speak to us today. Help us to be attentive, Lord God. And Father, fill me with your spirit and remove me out of the way so that you can talk to your people. And all, we'll be kept to give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we pray and say amen. Psalms 18, um, beginning in verse 1, we're going to start in verses 1 through 6. It says, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. Again, you know what? In, in, we really are nobody if we think we're somebody. Even someone like, like we were talking about the Apostle Paul himself last week, highly educated um, person of high respect in the community of the Jews who called himself a servant of Christ. Now you have King David here, King David, calling himself a, a servant, a slave of the Lord Jesus. Before you can begin to live this life the right way, you must have the right heart, the right attitude, and, and we're all servants before a holy God. We must have respect unto who the Lord is, a servant of the Lord who spake unto the Lord the words of this song. This psalm was actually a song, a song that David wrote. 
in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Our God will deliver us. And this is what David was writing about. He was so excited over the things that the Lord had brought him through because he was um, made king. But before he was, he was he was told he was going to be king, and King Saul was chasing him down, trying to kill him, had his men trying to kill him, hunting him down every day where he got to a point where he had to hide in a cave. But his enemies were upon him and, and, and really trying to get at him. Satan wanted him killed. You know, Satan, if you believe on the Lord today, he doesn't want you to, to make it. Now, and I'm here today to encourage you that you will make it. That our God will deliver us. He will deliver you. Verse 2 said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress. This is how we must depend on God because he is a strong tower. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you are a delivering God. The Lord delivered me from, from drugs. The Lord delivered me from alcohol. The Lord delivered me from running the streets. The Lord delivered me from living an immoral, adulterous life. He will deliver you if you would acknowledge him in all your ways. He shall direct your path. My wife just spoke that scripture to me this morning. Amen. I thank God for her. It says, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. Who is your trust in this morning? Is it in yourself or is it in uh, confidence in what you have? Are you trusting in God? Those other things in your life, nothing or no one in your life can deliver you from the type of trouble you're in. And you know this. You know the type of trouble you have. If you would trust in the Lord, he will deliver you. Our God will deliver us. He is my buckler, David says, and my horn. That just means my strength of my salvation. He's my high tower. Verse 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He was acknowledging who the Lord is and what he had done for him. And he said, Lord, you are worthy of my praise. In your heart right now, answer that question. Is, is the Lord worthy of your praise today? He is most certainly worthy of mine. I will call upon the, world, uh, upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. That, that's an old song. Now I see where they got this song from. Um, it's called The Lord Liveth. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. What a great song. I used to sing that song all the time in church. It says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death, they compassed me. He said, the sorrows of death. I was near death so many times. You remember in the word, it said the soul, it was about maybe two or three times, would take a javelin because that evil spirit would come on him and he would try to pin David to the wall with a javelin, a spear. He would have men looking for him, hunting him down to die. So he felt like that death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Have you ever just been scared? Be honest with yourself. Have you ever just been afraid that something bad was going to happen? I've been that way just recently. 
It says, the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. And that word there, prevented, it just means um, to, to, they came to, to meet me. Opposition came to meet me and to disappoint me. Hallelujah. It says, in my distress, David said, I called upon the Lord. This is what you need to do if you're having that time. I'm looking at what kind of time we're having in America right now where the devil, and this is who it ultimately is, is attempting to thwart the plans, halt the plans of the Lord, the plans of the kingdom by starting a race war. Oh my God, I know you can't help but see it. What's going on in the word talks about how the love of most will turn cold, will grow cold in the last days. Are we not here? Are we not walking in the days of the Lord? The scripture also says that uh, dangerous times shall come. Are we not living in dangerous times? But the Lord is a deliverer if you would call on him today just as David was felt like he was surrounded if you feel surrounded today if you feel pushed back if you feel held back held down if you feel like you are in danger call upon the name of the Lord our God will deliver us he said I called on the Lord and cried unto my God he heard my voice out of his temple the Lord will hear you if you call him from a, 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 a sincere heart that wants to know him, if you call on him and you're ready to stop doing it your way, the Lord will deliver you. And my cry came before him even uh, into his ears. Your prayers will not uh, hit the ceiling and bounce back down on your head. If you call on the Lord out of a sincere, a sincere heart, your prayers will reach heaven. Go into his throne room. Pass all those that, that try to block uh, you from seeing your God and your God from hearing you. David, not David, uh, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, once said he prayed and, and, and for 21 days, he was praying and that prayer didn't get through for 21 days because the angels were fighting over that prayer. And Daniel was uh, praying for his people, Israel. The Lord will hear you. The fight is on for your prayers to be heard. All you need to do is call on the Lord. Our God will deliver us. It says, Let's skip down to uh, verse 15. It says, Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundation of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. The Lord will... He gets angry about people messing with his children, with those that really belong with him, with those that are born again. It says the channels of the water were seen because the waters divided because of the Lord's anger. There were thunderings and lightnings. And it talks about in an earlier scripture in this same psalm that the Lord came down and there was dark clouds under his feet. The Lord gets angry, too, with people that he says, touch not my anointed. Glory to God. And you mess with his children, there is going to be trouble. Our God will deliver us. Do you believe that today? The foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of, of thy nostrils. 
You know, it's that picture of like a bull. You don't want to make him mad. It's a bull in a china shop. You know some stuff gonna get tore up. Well, some stuff gonna get tore up on your behalf. Go to your God. He will deliver. He is mighty to save. He sent from above and he took me and drew me out of many waters. That scripture just means that he reached down and heard my cry. He reached down and drew me up out of that trouble. The Lord will draw you out of that trouble. He will draw me out of that trouble. We need to trust him. Glory to God. Yes, the many waters just means the many troubles that were going on talking about the many enemies that were coming at him, all the things that were uh, causing him to fear. When you call on the name of the Lord, who is a deliverer, who is a strong tower, who is a mighty God, he will draw you out from the many waters, from the trouble, the tribulation that is coming your way. Verse 17 said, he delivered me from my strong enemy. And from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. He admitted, and sometimes we have to admit it, that the things that are going on in our life, they're too much for us. If you don't get that way, if you don't humble yourself to admit that, then then how would the Lord know that, how would he, why would he deliver you and, and you feel like you already have it all together? Cry out to the Lord. They were too strong for me, my enemies, David said. That's why he called on the Lord, and that's why the Lord responded. And the Lord, it, it, it says that in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The, the Lord is the same today. If you belong to him, or if you don't believe on Jesus, if you will put your trust in him and call on his name and ask him to save you, he will come down and respond the same way. But you must be ready to give up doing things your way. You must turn away from your sin and your wickedness. Why would he come to help you uh, with and deliver you from wicked men when you're being wicked? Does it make sense to you? They prevented me in the day of my calamity. They came against me in that day. But the Lord was my, but the Lord was my stay. That means the, David said the Lord, he was my support in that day. We need his support in these troubles sometimes. Call on the Lord. He is faithful. In the book of Revelation, he is the, he's called the faithful and the true one. Hallelujah. He brought me forth into also a, a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. If you belong to him, if you are born again today, the Lord is, the, he delights in you. Do you believe that, that the Lord loves you and that he delights in you? Well, if your faith is in him and that's what you need to for him to delight in you, because the Bible says that it's, uh, it takes faith to please God. For he who comes to him must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, who come after him hard in the paint. Faith pleases God. Your trust in him is what causes him to delight in you. Like any a parent would be proud when when their child asks, "Dad, Mom, save me!" You're gonna you run to their rescue, and you're delighted that they called you, and they didn't call on their, their friends, they didn't call on anybody else, but they called you, and you're proud to come and rescue your babies, your child. Well, the Lord is the same way with His children. He delights to come and rescue us. Our God will deliver us. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. See, it also matters that you do right before him. The Lord delivers me because I attempt to live righteously before him. I, I attempt to do what's right before him. I don't have to be perfect. No, no parent has perfect children, and so the father doesn't either. 
He doesn't have perfect children, but he has those kids. He like, look at my, my child. They're always trying to do what's right. They're always helping other people. They're always, they're always blessing my name. I will deliver them because of the righteousness that, that they have because of my son Jesus. His blood covers them, hallelujah, because of the grace of God and because they try to do what's right. They live a righteous life. The definition of a righteous man or woman is just one who, he who does what is right is righteous, the Bible says in 1 John. He who does not do what is right is not righteous. This is what David is saying, because he did righteousness. He lived a righteous life. So the Lord answered him according to that. And according to the cleanness of my hands, David says, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. He was just saying, because I've lived for you, Lord. And we need to be able to say that when we're in trouble, Lord. I belong to you, Lord, and I need your help. Please help me, oh God. Help me, Jesus. There's something I have before the Lord right now, even this morning, and I'm asking his, his guidance on and the word promises that if I would lean not on to my own understanding, but um, but acknowledge him in all my ways, he's, he's going to guide my paths. And I'm relying on that today because of who Jesus is and because of who I belong to and because of his righteousness on me and because I'm covered in the blood of his son, Jesus but also because I've turned away from my sins and my way, and I'm living righteously before my God. As David said, according to the cleanness of my hands. See, it's your effort too. Yes, we're saved by grace, but unto good works, hallelujah. Hallelujah, please get that. Please stop. Um, listening to that greasy grace message where you get to live any way you want to. If you live a foul life, you, do you expect to be able to call on the Lord and he hear your prayers? And you're living foul on purpose every day and you won't turn, you won't repent. Don't fool yourself. I'm here to give you truth. If you don't want to hear truth, it's okay. Unsubscribe to me. Turn it off. Like I was telling you last week, I, I need you to subscribe to Jesus anyway. I don't need you to su subscribe to me. I don't need you to like me. I don't need you to follow me. I need you to follow Jesus. He is the only one that matters. Our God will deliver us. For all his judgments were before me, Jesus, I mean, uh, David said. He was like, Lord, I be in your word even. Yeah, I'm doing what's right. Yes, I'm trusting in you first of all to save me. And but then I'm I'm living a, a holy life before you. My hands are clean, but all your judgments are before me also. That means that man, I put his word before my face. I rely on his word cuz Jesus is the word of God. And I do not put away his statutes from me. His statutes, remember Psalm 119 is just another word for the word of God. I don't push the word of God aside in my life. This is why the Lord comes to my rescue because he knows I'm trusting him and trusting in his word, trusting in his son. Our God will deliver us. I was also upright, David said, before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Listen at that now. This is a, a king here in the earth who could live any way he wants to, but he's living a holy life. He said, I also, um, I was upright before you. I did what's right. I lived right before you, my God, my king. And and I kept myself from my iniquity. That's the sin in my life. I, I turned from my sin. I kept myself from iniquity. Are you hearing this? The Lord, our God, will rescue us, but we better be living a life of repentance also. Confess your sin to God, and he is faithful and just. He will forgive us of our sin and purify us of all unrighteousness. He will purify you, meaning you will learn to live more and more of a, 
a, a, a God life, the Zoe life, that is the God kind of life. Verse 24 says, therefore the Lord have paid me back according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. Have you shown mercy to people? Then the Lord will show you mercy. With an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. Have you been living an upright life? Then the Lord will show you his uprightness, his, his ability to do good to you because you've been good to others. With the pure, thou shalt so show thyself pure. It's just talking about the cleanness of your heart, the cleanness of your life. You're not living foul. If you show yourself clean before the Lord and, and, and that you are, are willing to walk in the direction of holiness, the Lord will rescue you. These are conditions, you all, of having a, a God who loves us to, to be there, an ever-present help in a time of need. That's who Jesus is. For that will save the afflicted. You will save those who, are, who humble themselves before you. You will save us. Our God will deliver us. Thou will save the afflicted people, but will bring down the high looks. You'll bring down the proud. Or do you think you're better than anyone? Anyone. What we call a bum on the street living under a bridge. Do you think you're better than that man or woman who has nothing, who has no one? I tell you, if that person humbles themselves before God, they will be delivered. Our God will deliver us. Verse 30 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried, it's proven. Prove the word. Don't just, as James says, don't look at the word and then walk away and forget what you look like. Do what it says. Because our God is tried, he's proven, he's golden, he's pure, he's holy, he's right, he's strong, and he loves us. For who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? <laughs> I love that. It is God that girdeth me with strength. It is the Lord that strengthens you every day, that strengthens me and make my way perfect. He's the one that guides us. And as I'm giving you this today, I'm getting the answer to my prayers. <laughs> that I was, the thing I was worried about this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He maketh my feet like the hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He make my feet sure like the feet of a, a doe, a deer. They stand sure. They don't, they not off balance. The Lord gives them a perfect balance to be able to, to, to stand up and to take off in any direction. This is what he does for his people. We're not, we're not standing on shaky sand. We stand on the rock who is Jesus the cornerstone of the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And finally, we're going to go to verse 46, where it says, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. The song I was just singing a minute ago. The Lord liveth and blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is God that avenges me and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from my enemies. Hallelujah. That's enough right there. God is so good. The Lord, our God, will deliver us. He will deliver you. Call on his name today. He is mighty to save. He will forgive you of all your sins, all your wrongdoing. If you have backslidden, turn back to the Lord. He is waiting there uh, like the parable of the, uh, uh, 
what that, that son that went away and spent his riches and 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 it said he started eating with the pigs and he was like I ain't got no choice. I ain't got nothing to eat now. I'm going to go back to my father, and I'm going to have to beg to get back in his grace as well. As he was a long way off, the Bible says, the father saw him, got up, and ran to him. If you will return to God today, I speak this over someone who is it for. The Lord will run to you. God will, the King of kings and Lord of lords will lower himself. He will get up and run to you and wrap his arms around you and throw a celebration for you because he loves you. So what you feel? Get up, a righteous man falls seven times. That The word seven, the number seven just means completely falls, utterly falls. But he gets up again, she gets up again. Get up. Our God will deliver. Be blessed today. Be blessed on this week. Follow Jesus only. <laughs> I love you so much, people, family of God. Jesus is Lord, and he's returning soon. Look at the days. Look at the time. He is coming soon for his own. We must be ready for him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm second.